Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another standard chess video. I'm playing Hey, it's Miro. Good luck to my opponent. They open with e4. Shall I play a Sicilian? I think so. Let's do it. Oh, <laughs> we got another viewer. This is a standard stream, not a climbing the rating ladder, but uh, it is a standard uh, video here. <laughs> So just telling him what's up. Okay, knight c3. I think I will go d6 here. I often play a6 as well, but let's play d6. Potential transposition to an open Sicilian. All right, looks like they're they're down with that. d4, let's take. So 10 plus 2, this is a little bit faster. I'm a bit more pressed for time today. <clears throat> so I want to make sure I'm managing my clock well in the outset here. All right, so I'm going to play a6 here, preparing knight c6. This rules out bishop b5. Definitely could have played bishop b5 first, but then I would have to deal with the pin. I think that theory is a little bit sharper. So I'm going to play a6. Maybe we'll slow the actual position down a little bit, keep the moves flowing. Okay, and b3, interesting. Going for the uh, queenside fianchetto. I do recall some recent games where this type of thing has been played. So this is not completely unfamiliar to me. Okay, so I could play knight f6 if I want. Yeah, let's play knight f6 first. I don't see a downside to this. If e5, then I'm going to go knight c6. Attacking here and here. I suspect that white's going to do this, but I'm going to try to hold off on this move because I know the queen often retreats to d2 when you play that. And maybe I can actually keep some flexibility reserving d7 for this piece. So I'm thinking g6 here. Just checking to make sure I can deal with this move. I do believe bishop g7 should be fine there. Uh, yeah, I think that should be okay. Knight b6, knight c6. That seems to check out. Let's do it. I'm refraining from playing the obvious move because I think my opponent's kind of prepped in this line. This doesn't look like a variation you go into without prep. And given their rating, um, I know that's a bit cut off, but they're 22-18. I'm okay with, with playing this move order. Wow, look at this. We have 45 spectators here. Love to see it. Pressure's on. <laughs> By the way, I want to take this moment to say I've gotten some reports on recent videos that there has been um, a scammer messaging people saying to contact me on Telegram. And I wanted to clarify that is 100% not me and you should never respond to those type of people. Those are impersonators. They're trying to gather your personal information. It's a big problem on YouTube. I got like three messages this morning of people who had received comments like on my videos from this channel that's trying to impersonate me. I've reported it to YouTube, so hopefully they take care of it, but you never know. Uh, just protect yourself, folks. I would hate for any of you to um, you know, feel like you're carrying a conversation with me when they're, they're saying that you won like a, um, an iPhone or something. <laughs> like suffice it to say, if I contact you, it's only going to be via my official channel. And please do report anything like that if you see it. Okay, f4. Uh, bishop g7, e5. Again, I don't see anything particular I have to worry about here. So let's go ahead and do this. This would be aggressive, but I just don't, I don't see it working out after knight c6. And indeed, white castles, okay. Mm-hmm. And now... I think I will castle. Let's do it. At this point, white could consider this move if they really want. And again, I'm going to play knight c6, so leaving this move in reserve. King b1, sensible. Bishop g4, another move that's coming to mind for me here, hitting the rook. I have mentioned that I'm, I'm potentially keeping this option open. I do wonder if that idea has run its course, though, and I'm best off simply playing knight c6 just to get coordinated. I'm kind of thinking it might be time for that. Even though this is opposite side castling, I think it's going to be a little harder, harder for either side to pawn storm. White may decide to do it with this and this. I have discoveries with this knight. I'm definitely looking at that, but I don't see any particularly good ones right now. 
So knight c6, queen d2, queen a5, something along those lines. Makes sense. Uh, knight bd7. There's this lingering e5 move. I could play pawn b5. Pawn b5. Maybe white goes here. Still something I have to respect. Hmm. I think I'm going to play the knight c6 move. I think it's time to do this. Expecting queen d2 here. And then I'm debating between b5 or bishop e6, trying to plan on my opponent's time. b5 or bishop e6. b5 may be more aggressive, looking for b4, trying to disturb this knight, which is in turn defending this pawn. Bishop e6. Mm. Yeah, this diagonal is blocked. I feel like the bishop doesn't have as much of a future there. So I'm a little less enthusiastic about that. Lean in towards this one, folks. Lean in towards the b5 move. And e5 is not yet a threat, right? I can deal with that. Yeah, let's go b5. This is a loose knight, though, for the moment. So I was just looking both ways, crossing the road making sure it's safe to do so with an undefended piece. Okay, bishop d3. Mm-hmm. Let's go for bishop b7, and I think white's probably going to bring their knight out. And we have an interesting middle game on our hands after all that. Again, opposite side castle, so... You would expect some sort of pawn storm, but I think things are going to develop a little more slowly here. Maybe the play will gravitate towards the center, is my, my read. I could see white attacking me with this and this. I don't think I'm actually going to aggressively play for a king's, uh, queenside attack myself. Like b4, knight a4, it just seems hard to launch my a pawn. I'm more, more so looking at moves like knight b4 to unleash the pressure down the diagonal. Uh, maybe a, a central pawn push, although usually with this dragon formation, you're not going to disturb the D and E pawns much. So watch for me to play right down the pipe for the most part. Knight B4, Rook C8, take this. Knight D7, moves like that. Got white thinking a little bit, which is always nice. Maybe white sees this possibility and they're not not yet sure if they want to try to prevent it. I can't really think of what else white would be considering. Okay, plays that. Now, the thing I notice, if I play this move, white may be able to step back. Because after take, 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 this knight is loose here. So maybe I should play rook c8 in this position. Yeah, I'm going to quickly play rook c8. Looks useful. I think my rook was headed there anyways. I won't put my queen on the C file, like queen C7, knight D5. I kind of want to wait and see what white does before I commit to something like that. And this is somewhat preparation for knight B4. Because if we have an analogous line here where there's a, a chop, maybe I can take on C2 in some cases. So it's just kind of nice to have that latent pressure down on the C2 pawn. White goes e5. Okay, so I did look at this. I wasn't that concerned about it, but this will be interesting to see how it shapes up. Take, take, knight g4 was my instinct. Maybe white has some discoveries in mind. Uh, but that's that was what I was considering. <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely going to take, so let's just play that right away. And now I can decide between this or this. Both of which are enticing to me. I mean, this is the principled move. I think if I had to absolutely choose a move right now, I would play this. There is this alignment I need to be concerned about, though. So I'm just calculating. There's possibly a scenario where they could win an exchange, like go for this rook on c8. Like here, here, take take 
Uh, but I can take with the bishop. Let's say here, here, take bishop f5 maybe. Yeah, that's probably one of the more principled lines. I'm also keenly aware this is a moment where I could go into the tank, and I really don't want to go into the tank. I want to keep this, this flowing. Knight here, maybe bishop takes g6 is the point. Some of those exchange stack lines do look kind of sketchy for me, so I probably don't want to go into it. So it might be knight d5. Knight d7 I don't like because of e6, although actually that may be playable. There's also bishop takes. Hmm. Tricky, tricky little position here. Yeah, I think knight d5 probably take here, which I'm not super thrilled about and knight g4 queen f4 i have not been able to solve maybe there's a solution to that but i'm not seeing it ah there's knight f2 knight g4 queen f4 knight f2 okay that might change things that's that's interesting knight g4 queen f4 knight f2 bishop takes g6 Huh. I'm going to go for this. I'm, I'm going to take a bit of a gamble here. I want to make white think. I'm really not sure how this is going to turn out, but the alternatives don't look great to me. So let's play the principled move and hopefully try to get some time back here. I hate to like think all this time and then play a passive move. Yeah, and white doesn't even play the move I was concerned about. So e6. Now I have f5 against this if I want. It's a pretty decent stabilizing move, I think. Yeah, I could take two, but what can the what can the F five reply? Yeah, let's go here. But our queens are dueling along this diagonal. If if take here, I can take here. Among other things, I could probably also just take. Okay, I'm going to be real curious after the game to see what the uh, evaluation of knight g4 was. Okay, I feel better about my position than I did a moment ago, but it's still complicated. I think anything can happen here. Still looking at knight b4 if I get a chance. Maybe it was valid even on the previous move, but it stands to reason I probably got to do something about that. H3, I'll probably come back here. Maybe I could flirt with bishop h6. Looks a little sketchy, though. I'd probably just come back. Not, not overly concerned about knight g5, knight f7. Although that looks nice, I think I should be able to get counterplay. This pawn's annoying for white. Control some key squares. Yeah, if I get knight b4 and I, I'm not unhappy about my chances, let's say. But time is becoming an increasingly large factor here. Only a two-second increment. And I'm drinking decaf. <laughs> okay, h3. Seems to help me. I know I mentioned knight f6, but now I'm noticing I can come here. Maybe even better. I'm going to discard bishop h6. I don't like that move. Yeah, I think this is probably the move. I don't even know why I was considering knight f6 over knight e5. Let's do it. Yeah, I want to win this light square bishop. Even though I have a bunch of pawns on light squares, if I can recapture with this knight, open the position a little bit, and take their light square bishop, I'm feeling pretty good. Because interestingly, I don't think white actually wants to take because opening this bishop, giving me control of that diagonal and making it harder to play knight d5 kind of works against them. I could see white maybe moving their queen here. But it's possible I'll take the knight and then move the other, other knight into the attack somehow. So lots of minor, minor piece play going on in the center at this point.
Okay, time getting a little bit closer. I'm still down almost a minute, but we're narrowing that gap a bit. This feels roughly balanced to me. If I absolutely had to choose, I would slightly take black here. But I don't think it should be that far from equality. I think the E6 move might have been a mistake by white. But let's fully focus on the task at hand otherwise. I sense white's going to play a queen move here. Just because white's thought for a while and they have not played knight takes E5. Maybe I'll pre-move this move anyways, just in case. It is a free pre-move. It only activates if white plays knight takes e5. Otherwise, it's canceled. Oh, white does actually play it. Okay. There are move again, and now the bishops hit. Okay, so white thought for a long time played this. Kind of a simple way to play. Now, I could just trade everything on d3. I do notice this pawn is hanging in the end if I do that. Is there a concern about the rook coming into d7? I don't think so. My bishop is pretty nice. I play rook e8. There's also maybe some knight c4 possibility. Mm, that looks too speculative, though. Could move my queen. Nah, I think time to take. Let's capture. And is white going to take with the pawn? I think you kind of have to. Otherwise, I'm happy to trade queens and take g2. The pawn takes is not, not too appetizing. So I just sense the hesitancy here by white to play the moves that they may have to play. So I'm, I'm spending all my effort right now looking at C takes D3, what I'm going to do against that. Because I do think that's the best move. Leaning towards Queen D6 there. I'm looking for something tactical. I definitely don't want to play B4 and allow Knight A4. Queen D4 is kind of ambitious. Okay, and again, another situation White plays the move that I wasn't that worried about. All right, so let's take... I just think take here. Rook d7. I mean, this should be pretty straightforward to cover. <clears throat> All right. Let's see if we can call a bluff, if it is a bluff. I like pawns. I'm happy to take a pawn. All right, knight d5. So another offer of a trade. I think I'm going to have to take that knight. And do I start sprinting with my F pawn at that point? Or do I play some move to target the E6 pawn? Let's think. There's also this. But then, okay, I can't, I can't lose that pawn, huh? Let's not burn our bridges yet. Yeah, okay, take. White should play this right away. Don't think they should be thinking here about bishop takes g7. I, th I feel like that's only a move that could hurt them. There's virtually no upside to it. So rook takes d5. What do I do then? Probably trade the bishops. Wow. Again, they play a move that really surprises me. I just don't see the upside value there. I could even take this, right? Could snipe that pawn. Threaten this. It's got me thinking, that's for sure. <laughs> now, but then take f8, take c2, take d3 at the end. They take e7. Mm. Probably not even worth letting them get that situation. All right, let's just take. 
I think I'm going to play rook c6 here. Rook c6, rook d7, king f6. Yeah, let's go for that. I want to protect this guy. I'm not going to roll the f-pawn yet. Let's just tidy up the situation around my own king and these pawns. This could be a threat in the near future. Doubling might also be a theme. Okay, we're in bullet territory. Remember, there is that two-second increment. So no need to panic. All right, and now I think I should be able to win this pretty cleanly if I go here. Let's do this one. I'm not going to take yet because after the trade... They take this A pawn. I don't even feel I need to give the A pawn. I think I can do this and then here. And then take and keep the A pawn protected the whole way. I'm looking at any way that this could go wrong, but I'm not really seeing it. Okay, there's also this move now. There's also that move. I'm just going to stick with my plan, though. I don't think this is threatening enough to really cause me problems. This, if I let this pawn live, I'd have to calculate a few things extra. So let's not even do that. Okay, take. And now I'm going to, let's go here actually. And soon we shall start pushing. F pawn runs now with the king cut off. Here we go. Let's give a check. Take this one. Mm, let's give a check. Okay, resigns. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the game. Uh, yeah, a little quicker time control. I will go back to the longer time controls. Just a little press for time today, guys. So we'll do an abbreviated analysis here. This is a, a quite an interesting system. I'm not too familiar with it, this whole D4 approach with knight C3. But there have been some top-level games with this. And then the, the queen side fianchetto. Yeah, quirky, quirky stuff, but not un completely unknown. Okay, interesting. So it looks like here, according to the Masters database, I played a novelty, G6. Maybe it's been played in the Lee Chess database before. It has. <laughs> Nothing's new to the Lee Chess database. It's been played 469 times. But at master level, it looks to be a new move. Mm, already giving kind of a healthy edge to white, though, at this point. So that is what white did. F4, castles. I can see why this line has some venom because black has to be careful not to be cramped by these pawns and this opposition of the bishops introduces an interesting little dynamic that you don't normally see in open Sicilians. Oh, shout out to Neverness in the chat. Interesting. Haven't seen you uh, in a little while. That's an opponent I played in the standard game before, by the way, years ago. You can find that on my channel. Okay, so... Now we've actually transposed to one game in the Masters database where black played bishop e6. I played bishop e7. The engine is calling for knight d5 at this moment, though. Mm -hmm. I was never thrilled about this structure. I do think this structure would be annoying for black to play because the pawn on d5 cramps me, and I'm probably going to have to trade off my, my dark square bishop, the key defender of my king. I kind of figured if ever this was played, I would do something like this. And this trade I would be a little happier about relative to the other one because there's no pawn on d5 cramping me. The queen is close to my king if I need it for defense. This, the engine says plus one, so maybe there's some deeper problems here. Probably white's just a little more mobile with their pawns, but I don't, uh, I don't hate my decision to play bishop b7. If it's because of knight d5 and some deeper evaluation after a series of trades, something non-tactical, I'm okay with that. 
Yeah, still, even here, it's calling for knight d5. Doesn't like the, the e5 move as much, although still an edge for white. Calling for knight d5. Again, I, I probably would have played this move. But I think the engine is saying it just believes white's mobility and ability to create an attack is greater than black's, which I believe. These pawns, although nice and arranged in typical Sicilian fashion, are not threatening the black king as, you know, I would like to threaten white's king. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a little research on this line to see how black can best play against it. Okay, I am glad to see here, this is where I had a bit of a think, spent two minutes, probably a little too long, but this felt like a critical moment, spent two minutes trying to figure this out. Key thing for me, I, I constantly was running into issues against queen f4, you might have remembered, um, because of this bishop f5 idea, hitting the queen and the rook. But then it dawned on me that I can actually do this. And this still looks complicated, but it doesn't appear that I'm getting the worst of it. Interesting, I can play queen a5 here even. Okay. It's a lot to process for a rapid game. It doesn't appear that this is anything fatal, though. Maybe at best, white wins the material back with some small, small edge. Wow, so the engine absolutely hates the e6 move. So I think my instinct was kind of right about this moment of the game. And you saw, I think on three different occasions in this game, hey, it's Miro played moves that were totally different than what I had invested time on. Oh, and even has a comment here. I knew what I was doing was bad, but I wasn't sure what else to do after knight g4. Okay, so yeah, I think they also indicated, and hey, it's Miro, if you happen to watch this, please feel free to give us your comments in the, um, in the comment section below. We've had good luck with that, by the way. I've been playing a bunch of viewers randomly recently, so thank you guys for contributing your comments. It is a tough moment, but probably you should be getting off of the d file with your queen. You can see the engine suggesting all queen moves for the first four moves here. So that that's a theme that you probably could have done more with. E6, and I was pretty happy to play F5. I think taking is less good. This pawn is a target. Yeah, engine absolutely hates that for me. So F5 keeps things closed, and I also started narrowing the time gap here. Knight G E5. Yeah, I felt like I was fully out of the woods at this stage. Minus two and a half. That's, that's a vicious evaluation for a position where white hasn't blundered any material or anything. But white is losing their way. So that's the effect a few trades had. It took all the pressure off my position. I'm not facing the prospect of a knight d5 move anymore. That's a hard move for white to get in. I mentioned that in the game. Limiting the light square bishops nice. My bishops are gradually opening up on this board. The e6 pawn, as you saw in the end game, um, is liable to be overextended. So I think that was just um, a pretty impactful moment. Now, I thought for sure white should play C takes D3 here. Didn't like that transition to the pretty hopeless looking end game. So I think you, for better or for worse, you have to play this. And I was thinking queen D6. It's just another one of these very strong engine evals in a position that doesn't look that bad. But... I can kind of see why this is minus three, minus four. This pawn isn't playing much of an attacking role. The white minor pieces are poorly placed. There's still lingering issues with like pawns on G2, E6, maybe even D3 in the end game. I'd have to do a lot of work here to get through, but comparatively speaking, uh, much easier to play black here than white. Much, much easier. But white did this, and I was able to scoop this pawn on G2. So... Again, to my point about um, your opponent playing moves that you actually didn't invest a lot of your, your time thinking about, especially um, when your clock was running, that has happened so often to me, especially online, I've lost track over the years, where I will be worried about a specific continuation. I mean, you really saw it with white playing e6. I was especially worried about the queen moves, and... The speed at which my opponent played that very impactful decision, 10 seconds, to me indicates that they it wasn't nearly on their radar. And as long as I had some idea of what was going to happen here, I, I could be perhaps more confident than I was. This is maybe some hindsight bias creeping in. I think this, this mini discussion is especially relevant. Like, don't delay a move 
that you're almost certain you have to play because you're worried about some move like two or three moves down the line. Just play the move. And I have to tell myself this too. Play the move that you know you're going to have to play or you're 90, 95% certain you have to play and see what happens. They might deviate. And that happened on two or three different moments in this game, like right here. And I, I think I mentioned it. I invested all my mental energy figuring out what to do against C takes D3 and they didn't even play it. They played queen takes, which I thought was a lot easier for me. This end game is uh, winning for black. Let's just briefly check this. Yeah, bishop takes g7. I didn't like that. I didn't see the point of that compared to letting me take because it helps my king get up, come to f6, which guards e7 and also hits e6. It did, admittedly, it did make me think a little bit. I was debating if I should go here. I thought maybe I can win a pawn, do this. But I backed off of this because I thought, why even let white win the e7 pawn in the end? Let's just play for the solid extra pawn when... I can be pretty certain the e6 pawn is going to drop in the end. Yeah, rook c6 looks good here. I didn't see a whole lot else for white. I know we were both low on time. Fully admit, maybe there's better moves, rook d2 or whatnot. I just decided to go gather the e6 pawn. Could also probably take here and play rook d6. I think that's also legit. But my rook's kind of nice here. It stops a pass pawn for now. Yeah, maybe could have been more assertive. King e5, push forward. But I was trying to stop the white rook from getting to the f-file. And ultimately, I think this is definitely enough. Go gather another pawn. And we're off to the races here. White resigned. Had they moved the king, I probably would have taken and then scooped the a-pawn. Then I'd only have to, to negotiate the c-pawn. But I have too many pass pawns. Should be a pretty straightforward win. Okay, so uh, stats-wise... Let me move my webcam here. I got a pretty clean bill of health, actually. 97% accuracy to my opponent's 88. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my decision-making in this game. I got caught a little flat-footed in the opening. I'm not too familiar with this line. When I'm hit with an unfamiliar line, I usually try to err on the side of playing something that's not overly passive, but maybe a bit of a surprise for my opponent. And that's really tough because you're often playing like an inferior variation if you do that. But I think withholding the knight c6 move perhaps got the game into ind independent territory enough that my opponent was a little less confident heading into the middle game. But it did come at a cost, uh, that being my time. I was down on the clock for the first part of this game. All right. Interesting, snappy little game. Thank you to Hey It's Miro. If, uh, especially if you happen to watch this. Um, thanks for your comments, but thank you for the game in general. Hey, it's Miro. And thank you guys for tuning in. Again, if you could report any of those scammer bots that you guys see, that would be a help. Um, I just, it really makes me sick that there's predators out there taking advantage of people watching chess videos. So uh, please do report that to YouTube if you see anyone other than uh, myself like interacting and saying, hey, you won a prize or click this link. That's all that stuff is a scam. All right. Thanks, guys. Let me know if you have any comments on this game. I'll see you again soon. Appreciate it.